Welcome to Fearless Farm Finances, Module 7, The Statement of Cash Flow. I am Donna Gady, a farm business and production management instructor at Western Technical College near La Crosse, Wisconsin. One of the main parts of my job is to work with farmers to determine what their financial picture looks like and to track that picture to see if it is heading in the right direction. There is one worksheet that goes along with this module. Please have the worksheet by you as we go through the training. There are two pages to the worksheet, one example farm and one for you to fill out for your own farm. Cash is a hard topic to address on any farm. I cannot stress enough the importance of accurate and up-to-date record keeping on farms because of the ebbs and flows of how cash is received and paid. In almost any other business, there are fairly steady sales of inventory and purchase of items to sell. On any farm, there are times of the year that more cash comes in than other times of the year, even on a dairy farm. On a dairy farm, there are usually times during the year with fewer cows being milked. On a vegetable or crop farm, there is one time or several times when the product we are producing is sold. On a beef cow-calf operation, there may be only one time of the year that the calves and cull cows are sold. The statement of cash flow shows us if we are managing these ebbs and flows correctly and if we can pay all of our bills. The cash flow takes into account the cash inflows and outflows from normal day-to-day -day operations plus any investing or financing we are doing. An operating loan can get us through those times where outflow is more than inflow, but this has to be managed correctly. We also have to account for those family living expenses, whether they are high or low or whether they change throughout the year. The cash flow statement tries to answer four questions. Is the cash flowing in from the farm's normal operations enough to cover all of the farm's cash operating expenses. Sometimes we need to look at a month-to-month -month cash flow to make sure we can cover those monthly bills. If you consider capital assets sold during the year versus capital assets that you purchased, how much did those activities add to or take away from the farm's cash flow? Did you get to the end of the year and purchase a piece of equipment just so you didn't have to pay income tax? Was this a smart decision or would it have been better to pay a few hundred dollars in taxes instead of having a bill to pay each month that you cannot afford? Are you paying down farm debt or adding to it? Did those credit cards and operating loans get paid off every year? Remember, interest paid may be tax deductible, but that money is paying the bank to loan you money. It is not necessarily building equity in the farm. Are you building equity or is it decreasing? Go back to the balance sheet module to see how we can see this from year to year, but building a balance sheet is the best way to actually answer this question. I like to look at the cash flow statement as a leaky bucket. There is cash or water that flows in and cash or water that flows out. And what is left is that that sticks around to be invested back in the farm. How much is flowing in, how much is flowing out, and then what do you have left to work with? So what does the cash flow statement show us? Is it possible to be a profitable farm but have a negative cash flow? Paying large amounts of principal in a short period of time can be good or bad. If the loan is a high interest loan, this makes perfect sense. If the loan is a low interest loan and the cash can be used in a different manner and make you more money, it may be better not to pay off the loan. A farm can be profitable but have a negative cash flow if they buy capital items with cash. Buying a piece of equipment or doing improvements to a facilities and paying cash will look good on a balance sheet but may not work for your cash flow. 
Another example is investing in something that may not pay for itself for several years. A good example of this is building a beef herd or expanding your herd with young stock. It will take a little while before you see income from these animals. And lastly, a farm can be profitable but have a negative cash flow if they have high family living draws from the cash accounts. Do you know what your family living expenses are? Many farms that I work with do not and do not have a separate account for farm and personal. Keeping track of family expenses is important and needs to be done accurately to calculate the profitability of a business. The farm really does need to be treated as a business, not just a bank account. So in reverse, can a farm have a positive cash flow but not be profitable? This usually happens when farm debt is paid off and no building or investing is happening. So where does the cash go? If the cash is not going to pay down farm debt or to invest back into the farm, it is not making your farm any money. It is like burying the money in a jar in the backyard instead of investing it and getting paid interest on it. When developing a cash flow statement, there are four areas that we consider. Cash inflow from operations, cash outflow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. If you look at your worksheet, you can see these four areas. At the top is cash flow from operations, both in and out. Go ahead and take a minute to start filling out this so you can think of different areas where you will have an inflow and from different areas where you will have an outflow. Now that you have done a little bit of work on your own statement of cash flows, let's look at the example that you were given. On this farm, you can see the cash inflows were from the sale of corn, the sale of milk, the sale of some cull cows, and those bull calves. This farm also has government payments of up to $3,000. The total operation inflow for this farm is $314,920. If you look at the example farm outflows, you can see these are really the expenses that we report on our Schedule F income taxes. Things like crop insurance and seed any of those expenses for marketing of your product. The milk checkoff is separated here. It is good to separate out these and record them as outflows instead of just taking them off of the inflow. That way, through the years, we can see how these change. In the last few years, the number on here for milk hauling for some of my farms rose four to five times the amount in one year. So it's nice to separate things like this out so you can see how they are changing from year to year. This farm you can see has an operation outflow of $220,065. Although we have told you in several of the other modules that accrual is better than cash when we're talking about accounting methods, on the cash flow statement, remember, Cash flow is exactly that, cash flow. We use no inventory changes. Inventory changes show up on our balance sheets as inventory changes. On a cash flow, we see them as crops sold or feeds that need to be purchased because we don't have enough in inventory. We use no sales of capital assets. This will actually be recorded in a different section. We don't use any changes in accounts receivable or accounts payable. Remember, a cash flow statement is on a cash basis, not accrual. We do see accounts payable on a cash flow sometimes when we record loan payments if there are interest charges on those accounts that are past due. Once we have done the cash inflows and cash outflows, we can calculate the net cash from operations. This is simply our gross farm income minus the cash paid out for operating expenses. We move on next to cash flow from investing activities. Investing activities are those capital assets, both purchases and sales. 
For instance, if you can see this example, the capital purchase of a chopper box for $8,000 and the capital sale of a tractor for $6,000 means that we spent $2,000 more than we took in for our investing activities. Investing activity is anything that is bought or sold that could provide benefits to the farm over the course of multiple years, not items that are used up within a year. So let's look at an example of cash flow from investing activities. So for instance, on a farm, what if we purchased a tractor for $50,000? We had a $15,000 cash down payment on it, and then we took out a $35,000 loan. This should be recorded as a cash outflow for investing because we will be using the tractor for more than a year of $50,000. However, we also need to record a cash inflow of $35,000 from financing activities on our cash flow statement. So in order to get our net cash from investing on the example that you were given, we take the income from sales of capital assets and subtract the cash paid out for purchase of capital assets. For the example you were given, you can see capital purchases were $8,000, capital sales were only $6,000, so we have a negative $2,000 cash from investing. We are now going to move on to cash flow from financing activities. This is simply the money borrowed in loans or increases in balances on those loans and the amount paid on borrowed money. So if you look at the example that you were given, this producer has three loans, machinery, the parlor loan, and then a mortgage. You are going to record the principal and the interest for these financing activities and get your total loan payments. Remember, these are just the loan payments that you will need to make during the time frame you are looking at for your cash flow. So if you're doing an annual cash flow, you will do all the payments, both principal and interest, for the entire year. But it is recommended to do monthly cash flows. That way you only need the payments for that month. This is also a place where you might want to record those payments and interest that you're paying to credit cards and to some of those accounts payable like a loan or an account at a feed store. If you're getting charged interest on those payments and on that loan, you need to record them in this loan payments section. So where do farmer wages get recorded? The actual farmer's wages can get very confusing. If the farmer takes an actual hourly wage, it is simple. This simply goes on the cash outflow. If the farm pays bills for living expenses that vary every month, this is a financing activity. These are actually returns on the farmer's investment. The money, time he or she invested in the farm is paying him back. Off-farm wages are also reported this way. This income or cash received from the off-farm job is there hopefully only as needed, so is investment money. Hopefully the farm is able to support itself, but if it is not, money from the off-farm job gets invested in the farm and recorded in investing activity. So the big question becomes, does the farm cash flow? If you look at the example you were given, this farm does cash flow. With a beginning cash balance of $5,000, when you add in all the net cash from operations, take out the cash expenses from operations, add in the cash from investing and cash flow from financing, you'll notice the net change in cash is $797, thus your ending cash balance is $5,797. $797 may not seem like a lot of money, but if you really look, this farm paid off a lot of debt. For instance, paid off $11,000 in operating loans, 
over $63,000 in machinery loans. Although they had a wages from the off-farm job of $20,000, they pulled from the farm $36,000 to live on. So I would say on this farm, just being in the black and not in the red is a good thing. So let's review again what the statement of cash flows tells us. It is back to that leaky bucket we keep filling up. How much is flowing into the farm? How much is flowing out? And how much were you able to keep in your bucket and work with? The statement of cash flows shows us if we are managing those ebbs and flows that happen in farming correctly and if we can pay all of our bills. The cash flow takes into account the cash inflows and outflows from normal day-to-day -day operations plus any investing or financing we are doing. An operating loan can get us through times where outflow is more than inflow but has to be managed correctly. We also have to take into account family living expenses and a cash flow statement can help us determine what those family living expenses are. If you're looking for resources to help you develop your statement of cash flow, many times you don't have to look far. Your lender or an accountant can help you with these statements. There are also free resources out there through your university extension, both your local agent and possibly a university state-based resource. Wisconsin is lucky to have resources out there at a state level, such as the Farm Center out of Madison. We also have a farm business and production management program at many of our technical colleges. Other states have this program too. If you're trying to find resources in your area, feel free to contact me so I can help you. My contact information is listed on the screen. For more information on Fearless Farm Finances webinars, please visit the website on your screen.